okay so today we will discuss about the experiment number 10 in that the aim which is to study the effect of acetylcholine on rectus abdominis muscle of the frog so in that we have to understand the objectives of that so the first objective is to know that the rectus abdominis is the skeletal muscles so there are different kind of skeletal muscles are there so in that rectus abdominis we are going to study about that so first objective is to know that the rectus abdominis is the skeletal muscles then to locate the rectus abdominis on the abdominal wall of the frog next is to observe and understand the rectus abdominis is responsible for the compression of abdominal organs and to flex the vertebral column in the lumbar region and the next is to understand that acetylcholine which is responsible for the contraction of rectus abdominis so what we have to understand in that practical so what is the effect of acetylcholine when we are going to administer on that rectus abdominis which is nothing but the skeletal muscle so on that what is the effect of that acetylcholine should be there so that part we are going to discuss in uh, that practical so for that the requirements are animal which is frog we are going to use physiological solution is the frog liver solution next is drug that is acetylcholine which is 1 mg per ml the instrument or the equipments in that the shilling stones rotating drum then student organ bath will be there then aeration tube will be there then aerator then frontal liver writing liver then uh, stand clamps plastic packs so these are the requirements or the equipments for that uh, experiment so next is theory behind that experiment so in that uh, all of you know that that is skeletal muscles or the uh, skeletal muscles which is uh, also known as voluntary muscles and which is also regulate by the movement of the body and the skeletal tissue or the muscles which is also known as stretched muscle so that is the theory behind that experiment in that the skeletal muscles are voluntary type that we have already know and which is controlled by the nerve cells of that somatic system and the muscle tissue have the special properties like ex excitability and contractility extensibility and elasticity so these are the properties of the muscles so muscles can be uh, contract muscles can be extensible uh, then also it has the elastic property so that is the property of skeletal muscles and uh, that's why there is the muscle fiber here which is uh, given in that diagram so muscle fiber which is made up of in that the myofibrils and neuromuscular junction which is present so neuromuscular junction is the nothing but the join or the junction between the cells and muscle so that is known by neuromuscular junctions so uh, that is all about the properties with so in that the physiological contact between somatic nerve cells and the skeletal muscle which is known as neuromuscular junction means there is the junction in between the nerve cells as well as the skeletal muscle that is how it is known as neuromuscular junction which is present and at, uh, at this synaptic junction acetylcholine is released from the end plate of the somatic nerve cells and the acetylcholine which is the natural neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction and after it releases it interacts with nicotinic receptors of the skeletal muscles and this interaction is responsible for muscle contraction so what is happen in that how it will be contract the muscles so when in that junction there is the region of uh, acetylcholine uh, will be there and at that time the nicotinic receptors are open nicotinic receptors are open due to that the calcium channels are opens and due to that can calcium channels channels which will be increase the concentration of calcium channels and due to that the contraction is occur so we can uh, observe in that right hand side diagram that is the contraction so how it will be contract due to that um, see in that diagram the junction is present along with the receptors okay so which receptors are there there is nicotinic receptor so in that junction 
the nicotinic receptors are there the acetylcholine binds due to this uh, in that nicotinic receptors and due to this what happen the calcium channels are opens and the calcium channels are once one it will be opens it will forms the contraction so this is how it will be contracted likewise in that second diagram there is the relaxation relaxation means what happen there is no release, uh, release of that calcium channel as well as the acetylcholine so there is no any release of that acetylcholine and the calcium and due to that the tropomycin which is a uh, reacts with acetylcholine and uh, it shows the relaxation so this is how the relaxation is occurs so this is all about the theory behind that experiment what will be happen how it will be contract how it will be relax so next is uh, the acetylcholine after the interaction with the nicotinic receptor that is nn receptors which induces the change into the membrane potential and induces the influx of that sodium and calcium inside the cells and this leads to the muscle contraction means how the main point is what when the acetylcholine is released in that uh, junction so it will form the contraction of muscle so this is all about the contraction so you have to remember the uh, one point that is if the acetylcholine which is given into that skeletal muscle it will be contract so this is the first point so you have to remember when we are going to intake that uh, acetylcholine in that muscles it will shows the contraction of that muscles so this is all about the theory so next is procedure so procedure in that so next is procedure in that the isolation technique we are going to study the isolation of that frog so uh, in that the frog look into that uh, structure the frog is in dorsal position so the picking process by using the forceps we are going to conduct so the procedure in that the isolation technique of that frog the picking process or the picking process by using the forceps we are going to conduct Uh, we cut that the outer uh, skin by using the scissors and uh, forceps. So the, um, we remove that square box by using that uh, forceps as well as the scissor. So that is the square box, which is also known as the rectus abdominis of that uh, frog. So that part. I'm going to isolate this part uh, by cutting two sides by binding through the thread. This is how we isolate the muscles for the use of that experiments. So this is how we will be binding or uh, cutting the two sides. See, and that is the isolated part which is used. in that experiment and that part is uh, situated on that organ bath assembly so on that the organ bath uh, student organ bath assembly the tissue is washed by 3 to 4 times tissue is washed by the frog removal solution so next um, they are going to give Or the administer the dose of acetylcholine in that experiment. So by administering that dose of acetylcholine, we have to check what is the action uh, when we are going to administer the dose of acetylcholine on that uh, rectus abdominis of that frog. So this is how it will be administered. first we have to uh, adjust the baseline so we have to see the baseline what it will be shown and after the administering the dose it will slightly increase increase the response or the height of 
the contraction of the dose by the rotating drum. Graph showing increases from the baseline. While we are starting that drum, it will show slightly increase into that on um, dose. Effect of acetylcholine on that rectus abdominis of that muscle crawl. We are um, understand from that graph when we are going to increase the dose of uh, acetylcholine like 0.1 ml, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5. So the ml which is increased, so it will shows there is increase into the force of contraction as per the dose. So from that uh, we are going to observe. The observations like the dose of acetylcholine, when we are going to click on that 0.1 ml, it will show there is increase into the concentration of that uh, height or the response of that drug. So for 0.1 ml, the height of contraction, which is 13 ml, like for 0.2 ml of that uh, dose of acetylcholine, it will show the response of that height of contraction, which is 16 mm in the height. So while we are clicking on that 0.3 mm of that dose, it will show the response or the height of contraction, which will be 19 mm. While the 0.4 mm of the dose of acetylcholine, it will show the responses or the height of contraction, which will be 20 mm. So what we are going to conclude from that, when we are going to increase the dose of acetylcholine, it will show us there is increase in the concentration or the height of that uh, graph should be increases or the contraction should be increases while we are injecting the dose of acetylcholine. So from that, what we have learned, the acetylcholine shows the nicotinic action at the neuromuscular junction of the skeletal muscles. So in that uh, skeletal muscles, they are showing the nicotinic action. Means what is happening? The nicotinic receptors are present. So neurotransmitter is released into that junction. So neurotransmitter uh, binds to that uh, receptors. It will show the muscle uh, action potential. Then the contraction of muscles is achieved by triggering the muscle action potential. Then acetylcholine also increases the, increases the spasmodic action of that rectus abdominis. So spasmodic action means what? There is increase into that contraction of that muscles. So what we have concluded, if uh, acetylcholine given on that skeletal muscles, the, it will show the contractions. So this is all about that experiment.